we are seeing explanation for lalita sahasanamam i think we have to start with shloka number 111 the first name uh, the shloka is pulo majar ticha pulo majar chita bhandamojini barbaralaga vimarsha roopini vidya vyadaadi jagat prasuhu that is the shloka so first name is pulo majar chita archita means the one who um, who is getting worshiped the one for whom archana is done for is archita so devi is uh, worshiped by pulomaja who is pulomaja pulomaja is, is, is another name for indrani indrani is the wife of indra because indra's father called as puloma puloma is the name of indra's father pulomaja ja means the one who is born you know vanaja what is vanaja the one who is born out of vanam is called as vanaja girija girija is another name for parvati we all know that parvati is born for uh, parvata raja which is uh, himavan himachala so girija the one who is born out of giri is called as girija in the same way the one who is born to puloma is called as pulomaja that is the name of indrani pulomajarchita the one who is worshiped by indrani so she uh, it says that devi is worshiped by indrani there are several names like that in lalita sahasra naam for example rajarajarchita later i think it comes later or before i don't remember but there is another name called rajarajarchita rajaraja is another name for um, kubera rajaraja is another name for kubera the one who is worshiped by rajaraja is called as rajarajarchita in the same way the one who is worshiped by indrani is called as pulomajarchita then bhand mochini much datu mochini comes from the datu much to free you know it is from that the datu moksham comes the word moksham comes from much datu to to get to to free um to free of the worldly samsara is called as moksha so here ambal is called as bandha mochini bandham means uh, not you know talai nu tamil la solluva kattu talai abimba so bandham means um, i i don't I, i mean i can't tell the exact word in english exact translation in english um, say it is harassment or um, it is a form of hindrance called as bandha bandha mochini the one who grants freedom from all the bandha is called as bandha mochini this nama can be interpreted in two ways first way the major bandha that we all have is samsara and devi as shiva gnana pradayini gives gnanam to remove the samsara to get ourselves free from samsara and that is why she is called as bandha mochini here bandham is taken as samsara the one frees ourselves from samsara is bandha mochini another uh, another explanation for the word bandha is temporary hurdles you know i want a baby or i want my daughter or son to get married or i am in this position uh, from which i would like to be freed off you know it could, it could be a hard position in the office it could be a tough situation in the uh, in the house between two people you know it could be a tough uh, situation uh, in a relationship so i want that situation to go away so if people want that then they have to do upasana of this nama they have to do japam of bhandamochini namaha if they do this japam they will get freed of any hurdles that they get in their life so bandha mochila bandha mochini then the next nama is bharbaralaka alaka means uh, you know in the the uh, the, the hair uh, that is that is present on the forehead the curly hair the curly hair the, uh, the the small curly hair that is present on the forehead is called as alaka barbara alaka means she has got small curly hairs 
that is present on her forehead. So that is, this is a nama which explains the Rupa Saundaryam of Ambar, Barbaralaka. And then Sloka number 112, uh, Bandha Mochini Barbaralaka, uh, Vimarsha Rupini Vidya, Vyadadi Jagat Prasuhu, Sarva Vyadi Prashamani, Sarva Mrityu Nivarani. That is Sloka number 112. So let us see. First Nama is Vimarsha Rupini. So in Sri Vidya, this concept comes. One is Prakasham and another is Vimarsham. Prakasham means original light. Like you have light directly coming to us from the sun. So the sun that we see is basically light rays coming from the sun. So that is Prakasha. What are we seeing in the moon? When we see moon in the night, yesterday we saw beautiful moon, like very big moon yesterday we saw. Uh, I don't know if anybody of you has noticed. Yesterday moon was very beautiful. So that moon that we see, moon does not have a light on its own. But it is the sun rays that gets reflected on the surface of the moon and then reaching to us. So the reflected light is, ca- is technically called as Vimarsha. So Prakasha is the original light. Reflected light is called as Vimarsha. So it is not only light. Original of anything is called as Prakasha. Reflection of something is called as Vimarsha. So how this, uh, how this is associated uh, with Lalita Parameshwari? The original Prakasha is Parameshwara or Parabrahman. From Parabrahman, the consciousness emanates. Parabrahman is the Swarupam of consciousness. Parabrahman is the embodiment of consciousness. And from that consciousness, due to Maya Shakti, so whatever consciousness that we feel in ourselves is just a reflection of the consciousness which is Parabrahman. We can assume ourselves as small planets or moon. We are just reflecting the consciousness which is emanating from the Parabrahman. In this case, it is the sun. Because Ambal is the Maya Shakti which makes all possible. She is called as Vimarsha Rupini. Meaning, the creative power of Parabrahman creative power of Parabrahman is called as Vimarsha Rupini. So this Nama is very technical. I don't want to go so much into it. But you can just imagine as the Maya Shakti. Ambala's Maya Shakti is called as Vimarsha Rupini. Vimarsha Rupini, Vidya. Vidya literally means knowledge. Since she is the embodiment of all the knowledge, she can be called as Vidya. Because uh, if, uh, if somebody has a lot of money in Tamil, say, hey, our Romba Perium Panam, Abdin Sana in our tomb, he has got a lot of money. Hey, Avanak Romba Mula, Abdina, he has got a lot of um, intelligence. So here, Ambal is called as Vidya because she is the embodiment of all the knowledge that is present in this universe, good or otherwise. That is why she is called as Vidya. Next is Vyadadi. Jagat Prasuhu this is a very interesting Nama. Prasuhu means creatrix power, the, the motherly instinct, you know, the, uh, the capability to give birth. It's called as Prasuhu. Prasuhu can also mean mother. And from this word, the word Prasavam comes into play. Because what happens into Prasavam? The mother gives birth to a baby, right? So, Giving birth is called as Prasavam. And Prasuhu also means the same thing, giving birth. What is she giving birth to? She is giving birth to Jagat. Jagat Prasuhu. Jagat means all the universe. So Jagat Prasuhu means the one who has created all the universe. What is this universe made of? Vyadadi Jagat Prasuhu. This universe, the entire universe is made up of Panchabhuta. What are Panchabhutas? We all know. Akasham, Vayuhu, Agnihi, Apaha, that is water, and Prithvi, that is earth. Vyadadi Jagat Prasuhu means the one who gives birth to this universe from 
Vyad. Vyad means Akasha. Akasha can, can be called, uh, Vyad is another name for Akasha. Why Shastram puts Vyad first? Why it, it can easily tell Apwadi Jagat Pratuhu, Prasuhu means the, um, she created every uh, uh, universe from water. No. He says Vyadadi Jagat Prasuhu. She created this universe uh, right from the space because that is what Srishti Kramam. That is the Srishti Kramam. That is the order of Srishti that is talked about in Upanishads. In Taitriya Upanishad, this statement comes Akashat Vayuhu. Vayor Agrihi, Agne Rapaha, Adhya Prithvi, Prithvya Oshadayaha, Oshadi Bhyonam. Says, before everything, there was Akasha. Akasha is just empty space. So, from Akasha, the Vayu Tattvam came. Vayu means air. Yeah. From Vayu, Akasha Vayu, Vayor Agrihi. From Vayu, Agni Tattvam came. Uh, you know, even modern science accepts that because if you want to have a, uh, if you want to have air or any gas, you need space, right? Without any space, even air cannot be there. And Vayu Agni, if you want fire, then you need oxygen, which is the air. If you cut off the air supply, fire gets turned off, right? So Akasha Vayu. Vayor Agni, Agne Rapaha, from fire, water comes. Adhya Prithivi, from water, the Prithivi, the earth tattva comes. So, this is the order of the Srishti Kramam that has been talked in the Upanishads. So, when, whenever she creates the universe, she creates from space. So, here we need to understand one thing. Here, Space is something that is created out. Space doesn't exist. Uh, normally, if you talk, of, uh, if you think about the history of science, people have always considered space to be a constant entity. You know, Galileo or Newton. You know, Newtonian physics is based upon the constantness of the space. But only now after this big bang and after this relativity things comes into thing uh, come, you know th that has been invented the theory of relativity only after the theory of relativity now the science accepts that space is not a constant thing but it is created you know uh, when they speak about big bang theory they say big bang after the big bang even space and time are created so that notion they have uh, only, you know, in 50 years back or 100 years back. But here, this Nama says, Vyadadi Jagat Prasuhu, she has created everything including space. You know, Lalita Das Nama has been written so many years ago. Even at that time, our Shastra knew that space is not a constant thing, but space is also something which is created out. So space is also created just not, it just did not exist all the time. So, Vyadadi Jagat Prasuhu. Next is Sarva Vyadhi Prashamani, Sarva Mrityu Nivarani. So, these two names are also worthy of Upasana. Sarva Vyadhi Prashamani. Prashamani to neutralize. The one who neutralizes is called as Prashamani. What is she neutralizing? Sarva Vyadhi. All ailments. If she, I mean, she neutralizes all the ailments. You know, uh, there are uh, several temples for Shiva, Marundishwara, etc. Even Ambal is called as Garbarakshambhigai. Whenever we have any physical ailment, whenever we have any Vyadi, she, as a doctor, neutralizes those Vyadi. This being told in Vedam itself, in Rudram itself, Shiva, Rudrasya, Shiva, Vishwaha, Bheshaji, Shiva, Rudrasya, Bheshaji, it comes in Rudra. Bheshajam means medicine. Shiva, Ambal is also called as Shiva. Shiva is Shiva. Uh, Shiva is Parameshwara. And Shiva, when you end it with Akaram, it always according to Sanskrit grammar, refers to the 
female principle. It is the three lingam. So wife of Shiva, Parameshwara is Shiva, which is Lalita Parameshwari. Shiva, Vishwaha Bheshaji. She is the medicine for the entire universe. Not only for the universe, she is also Rudrasya Bheshaji. She is also medicine for Rudra. Because Parameshwara has eaten Hala Hala Visham. You know, uh, other devas are eating Amritam and even they die during the Pralayakala. But Parameshwara, having eaten the Alakala Visham itself, doesn't die in dur- even during the Mahapralayam. It is because Shiva Rudrasya Bheshaji, because she as a medicine is always present in the Parameshwara. When she can cure the ill effects of Halahala Visham, what about the ill effects, uh, ill health that we have in this world? You know, there is nothing impossible for Amba. So whenever we have any ailments, when we pray to Amba very sincerely with this Nama, Sarva Vyadi Prashamanyai Namaha, when we do Japam of this Nama, she will definitely uh, cure all our illness. Sarva Vyadi Prashamani. And then, Sarva Murityu Nivarani. What is Murityu Nivarani? Nivarani, it also has got same meaning, to cure. Murityu Nivarani, she cures all deaths. Sarva Murityu Nivarani, she cures all type of deaths. How can there be different types of deaths? When they say different types of diseases, we can understand. You know, one person will have flu, one person can have malaria, one person can have cancer, one person can have heart attack. These are all different types of diseases. But how can there be different types of deaths? Because there are different types of deaths. How we can have immediate death, apamrityu or akala mrityu. Vedas grants us 100 years of age. Shatamanam bhavati shatayu purusha shatendriya. Ayushyevendriye prathitishthati. Vedas says, according to Vedas, we all are entitled to live for 100 years. But nobody ever hardly lives for 100 years. We have accidents. We have all the disease coming. So these are all akala mrityu. So first type of death is your normal mrityu. Second type of death is akala mrityu. Third type of death is apamrityu. So you can have akala mrityu, um, you know, due to your own disease. Or you can have uh, mrityu because somebody kills you. You know, there are those are the different types of mrityus that are being talked about here. So sarva mrityu nivarani, she grants us whole dirga ayashu. Sarva mrityu nivarani is the first, uh, type, the first explanation. Is she uh, provides, she grants dirga yutvam in everyone. Sarva Mrityu Nivarani. Second explanation is Sarva Mrityu Nivarani could also mean you know the normal Mrityu that we are supposed to get after 100 years. But Tambal doesn't prevent us from that. Right? She is not preventing anyone from dying itself. Everybody dies whenever time comes. Right? So what is so this Nama will be you know this will be uh, ironic. So Shastra says, she prevents Mrityu by preventing your birth itself. In order to die, you need to be born. Right? When you are not born in this universe, it means that you doesn't die. So that is the uh, logic behind this Nama. This is not the logic that I invent. I invented just now. It is there in Vedas itself. The famous Mrityunjaya Mantra. What does it say? Priyambakanya jamahe sugandhim kshtivardhanam urvarugam iva bhandhanath mrityor mukshiya mamrathat. Normally people think that this mantra will prevent the death. But do you know the exact meaning of this mantra? This mantra basically says just as a cucumber fruit dissociates itself from the tree when it ripe, I want myself to be dissociated from the entire samsara when the time comes. I want myself dissociated from the entire samsara 
at the right time so this samsara also means our own body you know because our body is samsara samsara creates all the problem our body also creates all the problem so our body is also samsara and when i say i want myself uh, to get dissociated from the entire samsara it means i want myself uh, to get dissociated from my body when the soul dissociates itself from the body that is what is called as death right so when we think mrityunjaya mantra is going to prevent you death it is not preventing you from death you are basically asking for that so the real meaning of mrityunjaya mantra is when i want to get dissociated from the samsara i want to get dissociated from the process of birth and death when i don't when i am not born i am not going to die right so that is the logic behind the mrityunjaya mantra because mrityunjayam you are winning over the death by not being born the same way sarva mrityu nivarani means she uh, destroys all the death she uh, she is an elixir for the process of death she does that by preventing you from being born so that is the uh, logic behind this nama and then stoka number 113 agra kanya chintya roopa कलिकलमशनाशिनी आत्यायनी कालहंत्री कमलाक्षनिषेविता तो फर्स्ट नाम इज अग्रकन्या अग्र मींस फर्स्ट अग्रकन्या द फर्स्ट टू बी बोर्न और द फर्स्ट इन एवरीथिंग इन महाभारतम आफ्टर द पांडवस परफॉर्म द अश्वमेध याग कृष्णा इज ऑफर्ड द अग्र पूजा that is where problem comes between krishna and um uh his niece i i suddenly could cannot remember his niece's name his niece's name krishna kills him because he started abusing krishna uh because krishna was offered the agra puja so agra means the first so krishna was offered the first puja after um after the ashwamedha yaga shishupala yeah shishupala uh, shishupala objects the agra puja that is performed to krishna and krishna kills him because he has got some vara so let us not go into there but agra means first agra kanya she is the first and foremost in everything whatever puja we do she is offered uh, whatever uh, you know ritual do, we do she is offered puja first so that's why she is called as agra kanya that is one meaning another meaning can also be that agra means first right agra ganya from brahman she is the first born from brahman because only when she is present the entire universe is being created she is the maya shakti which causes brahman to create this universe and hence she is the first one Uh, apart from brahman to create this universe and that is why she is also called as agra kanya next nama is achintya roopa when we say agra kanya chintya roopa uh, that has to be split as agra kanya ye namaha achintya roopa ye namaha it has to be split like that not agra kanya ye namaha chintya roopa ye namaha no the entire the meaning will be changed entire meaning will be changed achintya roopa roopa we all know structure uh roopa means structure you know form achintya roopa she has got unimaginable forms she has got lot of forms the entire thing that we see around us it is her forms only so that is why she is called as achintya roopa she this can also be um uh, you know this name can also be interpreted as her stula form is so beautiful that somebody cannot even imagine when you see saundara lahiri acharya explains each and every part of ambar with one one shloka and if we go to muka panchashati there are 100 shlokas just for uh, you know uh, doing uh, thing uh, doing varnane just for her eyes atakshashatakam 
just for her smile banda smita shadagam these are 100 shlokas just for this smile 100 shlokas just for her eyes 100 shlokas just for her legs padara vinda shadagam so because she has got unmeasurable beauty in unimaginable immeasurable beauty and unimaginable beauty she is called as achintya roopa next is kali kalmasha nashini nashini the one who destroys kali kalmasha nashini the one who destroys the dosham who destroys the dosham of kali yuga you know shastra says in satya yuga everybody is perfect and the entropy the deterioration the dharmic entropy starts from satya yuga to kali yuga and by the end of kali yuga you have entropy you have uh, there will be no dharma everywhere anywhere in this universe and you know kalki bhagavan came there is going to be pralayam etc but she can prevent the dharmic entropy even in the kali yuga when you worship to her she can remove the ill effects of kali yuga just for her devotees that is kali kalmasha nashini you know there, there is this famous um, verse they say kalau chandau vinayaka in this kali yuga there are two gods which who needs to be worshiped one is vinayaka and another is chandi so if you worship these two gods they can give you everything they can remove the ill effects of kali yuga and chandi we know is durga parameshwari which is one other form of lalita para bhattarika that is why she is called as kali kalmasha nashini so we will stop with here uh, which is the first half of the shloka 113 we will resume in the next class with katya ini kalahantri kamalakshani shivita hari om sri gurubhyo namaha hari om Have a great weekend everyone let's see uh, let's see next week.